like I've done everything I can do for him, got him past his due date, and um, now it's his turn to show us what he can do along with the help of the doctors. He basically has what we expected, okay? Big diaphragmatic hernia. Yep. Yep, I do think that we're headed for echo. That's a, that's a machine that's essentially a heart-lung bypass machine for babies. And it's a life-saving machine, and without that technology and that equipment, uh, Rocco would not have been able to survive. We'll keep thinking positive thoughts and believe in him, and we named him Rocco because we need him to be a rock and be strong. So hopefully he can do that for us. So within a couple hours of him being born, he was put onto an ECMO circuit, and that all went fine, and we were happy, and then the baby stabilizes out for quite a while. And about 10 days after going on the ECMO circuit, Araka was finally ready for repair. He had um, his diaphragm repair on July 3rd, and um, they went and you know, made an incision in his abdomen and um, found that there was very little of a diaphragm there, just a little sliver on the right side. We go in there, we repair the diaphragm, we pull all of the abdominal contents that don't belong up here in the thoracic cavity, we pull them all back down into the abdominal cavity, and then we put a patch to sew together the diaphragm. When patients are on ECMO, there's always a number of potential complications that can happen. Rocco was doing well immediately after surgery, and we had an issue with the ECMO circuit where it was starting to form clots within the circuit. So they had to emergently take him off of ECMO about 24 hours after surgery. He came off and did um, pretty well for about two days and then started having, um, kind of started to take a nosedive. And so we had to put him back onto the ECMO circuit, which is really a struggle once you already have uh, a, a baby's big artery and big vein in the neck kind of tied off from being on and off an ECMO circuit. It's really technically challenging to get him back on. As much as we felt prepared for what the road would look like, ECMO and then you know kind of a long run here at the NICU nothing really prepares you for you don't know what kind of roller coaster you're going to be on. So we've pulled him through this uh, amazing process uh, with all of the resources that we had we had to use every single resource we had pretty much almost three full weeks of ECMO uh, multiple surgeries, the, the technical expertise to put someone on ECMO, take them off and then re-put them on, um, the technical expertise to run the ECMO circuit so efficiently, the, the surgery that he had done. We play on the floor and we do some exercises and I get to feed him. He can be held all the time because, you know, for, I don't know, five, six weeks, we couldn't hold you. There's very few centers in the world that would be able to achieve this outcome for Rocco, and I'm privileged to be at one of those very few centers. See if you can make him smile. Smile. Having him home's been great, not driving to the hospital every day. Um, yeah, now that he's settled in, it's a lot better. He's sleeping mostly throughout the night, which has been great. Good job. You know, as hard as, I think it was almost 100 days in the NICU. Well, I just couldn't imagine it any different now because that was just his, his roller coaster ride. And I just think of all the people we met and the nurses and the doctors and the surgeons and all of the support staff. And even during my pregnancy, it's just, just feels like family now. I just can't thank Children's Hospital enough for everything they did for our family and how, it just not even just Rocco. I mean, it's just an experience to be there. You just feel just loved and there's compassion and 
because it's like you're you're fighting the battle too. He is, but you are, and it just I think it was a whole family experience. Thank you.